time and all those here for this special event. Welcome our dear brother back from South Africa, Chen Blom and, and his wife, Hetty. And uh, we love the Blom family and uh, love all of you guys. And we just want to welcome the Holy Spirit. He's already here. He's already moving, breathing on us, through us and around us. And we just want to hear the fresh word from the throne room of God, from his very heart. In Jesus' name, welcome again. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the opportunity and to be able to come and share and just to impart and impact and change people's lives. Because that is why we've been created, is to, uh, to be people of influence, to bring transformation, to bring heaven to earth as it is in heaven so shall it be on the earth and yeah we'll get deeper into that now but let's pray together father we we give you glory we give you honor we acknowledge you in this house in this time at this moment as the king of king and the lord of lords how honored we are to declare your presence that we are on you and you're on us We thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor for your grace that all of us have been chosen to represent you. Yes. That you've bestowed the fullness and infused the fullness of you inside and in, upon all of us. That we can truly say we lack nothing. Well, then we just come and we surrender body, soul, and spirit to you. We lock our eyes, our ears, our hearts unto you and in you. Mm -hmm. We declare we've got eyes to see and ears to hear. Mm -hmm. We've got the heart of the Father. And God will be glorified. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or in tonight, it will be a fresh touch from your spirit in and upon each yes. and every person. Yes. And that transformation will take place. And already, Father, we can declare that we are not the same as 10 seconds ago because we are your prayer. Oh, what an amazing Father you are. The only way, Lord, that we can truly say thank you to you, not through idle words, but Lord, to reveal Jesus Christ through our lifestyle, to rule and to reign mm -hmm. according to your purpose and your will, mm -hmm. and that every knee would bow and come and confess yes. Jesus is King. Yes. He's not just a spirit out there, he's a reality, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's a king that have called us to a face to face mm -hmm. relationship with him mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. even before the foundations of the earth. Mm -hmm. And we say thank you. We give you glory, we go to you honor, Lord, and we know it's going to be a glorious night. Mm -hmm. And we thank you. Yes. We pray in the name of Bible names, the name of Yahweh. Yes. Amen and amen. 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 <laughs> well, tonight we're going to touch on a few things. So much what I can share and want to share, but we'll we'll have to stay open overnight. <laughs> I'm going to touch on certain things and transmission um, about COVID, about what's going on. And when the Lord says, don't ask me for that, what are you going to do about things? That is one of the most important things for this time and season. People, and this is not being religious. I'm telling you, COVID is one of the best things that could have ever happened to creation. COVID is a blessing. COVID is your greatest upgrade mm -hmm. into unity with Christ. Yeah. COVID brings the darkness upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And what does God say? I hide myself in darkness. Mm -hmm. My throne is in the cloud of darkness. My glory is in the cloud. The pavilion of angels is in the darkness. 
So the question is, what did you focus on? What did you engage? Because what you engage, you empower. So did you engage to light the glory or did you engage COVID? You see, a lot of people that went through a tough two years and a lot of people that lost so many things in life. We're we talking about lives, we're talking about businesses, oh, yeah. we talk about family, we talk even about churches splitting up, we talk about marriages being destroyed, relationships, and everything about God's about unity. He created everything to have harmony. Creation is all about harmony. It's about a family, it's about unity, it's about a body. It's not about a person. The only person that it all has been created is about God being glorified. God being exalted. You've been created to honor and to glorify them. So then COVID and all these things came. And I am sad to say tonight, what a poor reflection of God came out of the church. Yeah. Let's make it clear. The chaos in the world got nothing to do with the devil. The chaos of the world exposed the church, the sons of God's true relationship. I want to say something. This is the greatest season ever in creation. He's your, he's your king. This is the greatest season to reveal Christ. 2022 is the year of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about not in the spirit of the in the natural. It's a year where we're going to see people walking transfigured in the streets, where we're going to start walking like the Peter's, but even in greater measures than Peter, that we walk past people, they're going to get healed, they're going to get delivered, they're going to fall on their faces, they're going to start acknowledging Christ because of whom you're walking with. God did not create beggars, he created kings and priests in the order of Melchizedek. Finish. Yes, yes. yes. We're talking about prayer, and the, uh, one of the friends here in the meeting sat and said, yeah, the Lord asked him what he's going to do about COVID. But the prayer is one of the greatest revelations of a person's relationship. Because, I'm not shy to say, if you listen at 98% of Christian prayers, it's just a bunch of beggars. Lord, please come and do this. Lord, please destroy that. Lord, please come and help you. Lord, please. Come. But what did God do in Genesis? Genesis 1, he went, he said, in the beginning, Bereshit. In the beginning, it means at the head, at the top, at the highest place, at the start. He created the heavens and the earth. Where were you in the beginning? What did he say? I knew you before the foundations of the earth. I knew you before you were in the mother's womb. So in the beginning with creation, you were a participant. You were a witness of creation. So in the beginning, God put you at the head and at the top. So already he gave you a vision and a position to arc over creation and to have a full 360 view in all dimensions of what creation is about. It's already been imprinted in your DNA. It's on your scroll. Then he went back to... Genesis 1 verse 26 and verse 28, and he said, I created man, I created him in my image. It means in my likeness, in my intelligence, in my creativity, in my awareness, in my sense of purpose, and his imagination. So he gave you the ability exactly as he is. Colossians 2 verse 9 declares the fullness of the God at three and one is in you. He did not say, I gave you a drop. I gave you a portion. He said the fullness. 
Why? Because he, he told man, you now go and rule over creation. What happened? It stirs some religious spirits. <laughs> Love it. Six days he created. The seventh day he rested. Why did he rest? Because in the spiritual realm, it was the transformation of authority on the earth from Christ to man. Because he said, you go in the room. Hand it over the baton. Mm. The heavens belong, what Psalm said, the heavens belong to the Lord and the earth to the Son of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's the owner of all of creation, but who did he give rulership to? So that's why I say pray. Why do you ask God to come and do everything? Are you a beggar? It's about intimacy, it's about relationships, it's about trust, it's about faith, it's about belief. It's about identity. The biggest problem on earth, man has lost their identity. Who rules and who reigns? The chaos on the world is not because of the devil, it's because sons of God have not taken up their positions. Mm -hmm. We're still begging God to come and do things. You are supposed to change the world. To bring transformation. You are a king. Now how does a king rule? If you're the king. Let's say you're the king of Charlotte. What does a king do? Firstly he's going to analyze. What is wrong in Charlotte? Secondly he's going to look. What is it wrong needs to be replaced with? And then he's going to instruct it. He's going to make it happen. That's what a king does. The Lord says, I maintain and I uphold all of creation through my mighty word of power, Hebrew 1. So when he created man, you see, but the difference is he did not create man, he formed it. So what does it mean? He held you in his hands. He imprinted himself, his image in you, his DNA in you. You got impartation to participate with him. God created man to walk in harmony with him and to create and participate in harmony with rulership, with creativity, with creation, because he's an eternal being. He created man for eternity, for participation. God created man because it was the desire of his heart to have a partner. That is why you get the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and man. Man was a fulfillment of the heart and the desire of the Father. That's why he created it. Everything that God's got falls in. The four faces of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, man. Even in the four faces of God, man is there. Because man fulfilled the love, the heart of the Father. He had an unconditional love. So this is about rulership. It's about instructing. It's about removing. It's about destroying and stop being this religious person that wants to bind everything. Because a thing is bounded only for a season. And let me be honest with you. I have never seen any demonic power in all the countries I've traveled over the world that have been bounded for more than two weeks. And when they get loose, where do they go to? Just the next person to destroy. A king destroys darkness. Yes. The earth has been created to be filled with the glory of God. Nothing else. He told you, make the earth as it is in heaven. So when God came, let's go a little bit into the scripture, which is the most important. 
2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. The old, the fresh and new one has come. So, what happened with you? When you got reborn, born from above, and you went through a transformation, you became new. He never said you became restored. What is the church being busy doing? We're trying to restore. Mm -hmm. We put on second hand parts to people like a car. <laughs> God makes a new. He said there'll be a new earth, there'll be a new heaven, and that's another teaching. But you are a new creation. What did God do? When you entered the womb of your mother, you entered into sin. When you got reborn, born from enough, become a new creation, God repositioned you as the being he firstly created you before you in a mother's womb. Perfection. So it was an activation, a fresh breath of God coming in you in the original purpose and person that he created you, manifesting now as the reborn, the new creation. So what does it mean? In reality, when you got saved, reborn, it says you step into the fullness of the character, the nature, the authority, the power, the honor, the love of Jesus Christ. Now, the question is, do we teach the people about being a new creation, your new identity, that the old has been taken away? All your flaws, all your sins, everything does not exist anymore. Yeah. And do we remind them of what it was before they were in a mother's womb? You can only do that according to your knowledge of Christ. So as I said the other night as well, The measure of what you know of Christ is the measure of what you know of yourself. Because everything of Christ has been given to you. His identity is everything. If you don't know Christ's identity, Christ's capacity, Christ's power, his love, all those revelations, you don't know your own capacity. So now Jesus went to the cross. He died. He resurrected you got resurrected is the new creation in the new Christ. Why? Because his desire is to reveal himself to man. So that you could see his face, face to face relationship. Why? Because he wants to bless man. He wants man to have the authority, the power, the honor, the joy. To rule and reign in fullness so that he has man that will walk on the earth and not only on the earth and all dimensions and realms to create and participate with them. So when we struggle with identities, when we struggle with unworthiness, when we struggle with rejection, when we struggle to overcome or to get victory, we know I've got a lack of identity, I've got a lack of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from God. I've got a lack of relationship and intimacy. Why? Because in Christ as a new creation, as a king and a priest, you can't lose. You are seated in a place of victory all the time. Yes. The reality is as a new creation in Christ, you on Mount Zion, what does the word say in Hebrew? What does it say in Psalm 48? It says it in, in Hebrew 7 and everything, and 11, it talks about it. You're in Mount, on Mount Zion, in the new Jerusalem, on the throne of God. What does it actually declare? You're untouchable. Yes. Uh-huh. 
But why do we get sickness, disease, all these things? Why do we still struggle with identities? Why do we still struggle to overcome? Because we abdicated our position. We're not trusting and believing God. We listen to the world. And not to the one who formed you, who created you, who breathed in you. So now you're the new creation. You're in Christ. You all things are new. And it says, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor brought us into harmony with himself and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. So what is part of your duty? To bring all of creation in harmony. As I said in the beginning, everything is from Christ. It's a body. Harmony. Is the world in harmony at the moment? No. No, not at all. Let me give you an encounter. So I get taken into the palace. The Lord said, let me show you the symphony. Let me take you into a leaf of a tree. I want you to hear the sound. And I went inside a leaf and I heard a symphony playing. Most beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. Then he said, let me take you into the trunk of the tree. Into the trunk. Now we say, I said, listen to the sound. I heard this another symphony orchestra. And he said, have you heard your own symphony? I said, no, Lord. He said, let me show you. And he took me into my DNA. And I heard the sound. Amazing. And he said, that's creation. Every person has got a symphony. Everything I created, every leaf, every sprout of grass, everything, a stone, a rock the waters, every animal, every star has got a symphony. But every symphony are actually just one note. And if you as man don't walk into your calling, your purpose, your destiny, you like a guitar, which one of the strings are not in tune. So you influence all of creation. Now, when you are sitting here right now, just thinking, you are influencing all of creation. It's impossible for God not to influence all of creation. Didn't he say you're the same as him? You've got the same capacity. Didn't he say you are inside of him? So what is it about? It's about sound, frequency, vibration. God created. He spoke. Sound, frequency, Holy Spirit, harmony, and it formed. Your body, and the, even the scientists have proven it, your body releases a sound, a frequency, a vibration. Your mind releases a sound, a frequency, a vibration. All the time. You are busy creating, forming all the time, 24 hours each and every second. What happens? Let's put it in worldly terms when you've got reseated, repositioned, when you've got born from above and saved. I'm going to put it to you this way. God in heaven is like a energy system. What I mean by that? There is movement, sound, frequency, vibration, energy being released each and every second. And when energy is released, energy means it is the ability to work. Go and look it up. What does it explain in the dictionary? Energy, the ability to work. So what is it? You've got the ability to work, but there's a difference now. To participate with creation with God. So how does it work? This is how transfiguration comes in. With energy. Let's give you a system. Let's, I'll, I'm going to teach you if you 
how it's been revealed through to me in the palace. So if you take two magnets, let's say two South Pole magnets, what is going to happen to them? They're going to push each other away. But you take a North and a South one, power, they get together. What is happening in your soul and in your body? There's a wall between light and darkness, opposites. What's going to happen? They're going to clash. They're going to move towards each other because they are fighting for position. Let's say they're fighting for air time. <laughs> Who's going to have the most control? So, to give you an to put you in a scientific position, light moves at 186 miles, yeah, 186,000 miles per second. So you're a new creation seated in Christ, so it means you move above that. And you're above time, above space, above sound, above light. So if two cells, one from darkness, one from light, comes and clashes at a, above 186,000 miles per second, what happens when they clash? A spark erupts, explosion takes place. And the highest order takes control. So it means where your heart is aligned with Christ, in Christ, in his purpose, in his will, in unity, that the highest power, which is light, destroys darkness and your body gets enlightened and transfigured. Because your body is an energy system that's in constant explosion. <laughs> new creation and that's why Enoch spoke <clears throat> you go and read the word about Enoch we speak in this day darkness could not touch him and we all know that Enoch walked and he walked no more darkness could not touch him death could not touch him and as he said himself what is death death is sin Death is curses, death is sickness, death is disease, death is jealousy, death is hatred, death is unforgiveness. All those things cause us death. So what did Enoch do? He knew that his system that he is has to be light because he's a light-giving spirit which God declared upon all of us. Light is, Hebrew and Greek, life and lightning life and lightning so what did Enoch do he was so in awe and amazement of God keeping his eyes on God that he could not even see darkness because he knew what he engages he empowers and he becomes what you behold with your eyes and with your ears and and with your what you touch you become. So what did Enoch do? He touched the one that gives him life. He made a deliberate choice. That's why you war with your hands. The word, the word speaks about war with your hands. Habakkuk 3. It says, and God came and he stretched out his hands and light came out of his hands. Hebrew and Greek says, God stretched out his hands, light and lightning. Yes. That means light is life. Mm -hmm. Lightning comes out, it destroys darkness. Yes. So I don't need to be a Chuck Norris or Three Musketeer or something <laughs> to go and destroy darkness. I can stretch out my hands mm -hmm. and destroy everything because I release life and light, the presence of that's where we need to come. You need to come to the realization how privileged and how honored you are to be in his presence all the time in a place of victory. And that's a problem in the church. That's a problem with man. We don't realize how blessed and honored we are. Yeah. Right. 
We receive so much without even asking anything. So what happens? And that is exactly what happened on the mountain of transfiguration. God revealed, Jesus revealed himself. Because what does he say? I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. So he looks upon heaven, his Father all the time. But now you're in a different situation. You are seated with him in heaven. So it's a, it's a shift that needs to take place. We need to get out of our heads. Amen. You're a spiritual being first. Amen. And this is to take on your spiritual dimension first. Because nothing will change on the earth unless it's done in heaven. Amen. Nothing will have an eternal um, change into a value to it or eternal transformation unless it's done in heaven. That's why how many times in intercession and prayer people pray and it goes well with that person for a week or two and then everything crashes. It's like a roller coaster ride in most people's lives. Well, they've done it in the natural. They've done what they see in the natural and not as it is in heaven or what my father reveals to me. Very important. So you are children of light, you are children of the world. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 5, Matthew 5, verse 4, 14 to 16, that you're going to read about it. So you are life-giving spirit. So COVID came. What did the Christians pray? Lord, I ask that he will not die, that you'll give him life. I ask that you will take the sickness and the disease away. Ain't you a life-giving spirit? Now, the word says where God walks, heaven and earth trembles, darkness flees. Isn't sickness darkness? Are you walking with God? So it actually means you're supposed to put your name in and say, where God walks, darkness flees, heaven and earth trembles. Finish. Life comes in. So it's about authority and power. It's about trust and believe. It is done. But it also says, and 1 John 5, verse, and paraphrasing verse 14 and 15 said, if you pray what the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, it is done. Amen. What do we do? We look in the natural, and then we pray. We declare. We decree. And that's amazing, and we get goosebumps, and I don't know what all nonsense. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Because all was out of your soul. If God speaks, there's transformation. Yes. It's impossible for God to speak. And change does not take place. His word does not fall on the ground. And if you say, and I say, we're in him, and we release what he said, it must manifest. Mm -hmm. The reality, if it does not, you have not heard. You have not heard. Right. So we've got a new earth. We've got a new heaven. And it was God personally present in Christ, reconciling, restoring the world to favor himself, not counting up the trespasses and things of the man, but gave you a ministry of reconciliation. So what is our duty? Not restoring people. It is taking them, repositioning them in their new identity, their new creation that was already given to them. Before then, the mother's womb, what you're actually doing, you're activating these scrolls. What do you do? You remind them of what God said and revealed to them before they were in the womb. Ephesians 1 says that God declared to you, showed you your calling. Before you came to there. So what does it mean? Remember God never forces himself. He's given you a free will. So it means before you in the womb. 
before the foundation, he sat in conversation with you and discussed your calling, your purpose, your destiny. You came into agreement when you got conceived to enter the womb. There was an announcement made in the spirit. For example, now, Hetty, on her way to earth, this is a calling, a purpose, and destiny as a king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Nancy, this is a call. All of creation heard Nancy is coming. This is what she's going to do. You were in agreement. When you're in agreement, it means you came into covenant. Yes. Aha. So should I ask, how's that covenant going? <laughs> People, do you see how we miss? Because we got we are so full of religion. But the greatest thing is love. Mm -hmm. We miss out because we don't know what love is. And I know all of us here, all of us in the broadcast, all in this place, love the Lord. No doubt about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been on the broadcast. You wouldn't have been here in this room. Christians, are you a lover of God? And if you go and research and love of God and Aramaic and everything that means first love. Mm -hmm. And that TPT, which is the interpretation, not a translation. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 20, 12, it states, to the lovers of God, I have given eyes to see, ears to hear, and with spiritual discernment. So nobody can ever come and say, I don't see, I don't hear. The question is, what's wrong of your love? Mm. That's really good. What's wrong of your love? So what happens now? First love means all your decisions are based on God, to God, to glorify according to his purpose, his will, his calling, because it's to honor and to glorify and to acknowledge him as king of kings. It's not based on your children. It's not based on your husband or your wife. It's not based on your church. It's not based on your bank account. It's not based on your job. It means your decisions are based on what he says. And that's why I'm not shy to say, I personally think that 98% of Christians not got a first love. I love the Lord, but he's not first love. Because if he was first love, the earth would have been full by glory. Yes. So there's a love which the Jews love, the Aramaic people in the beginning. When you go and research some of the old scriptures and scrolls or original ones, it's a love Call Raham. Raham. It says in it, it is the same love as a mother has for a child in the womb. Its softness, its gentleness, its compassion, its loving kindness, and its unconditional. A mother, when she conceived a child, when there's a child forming in a womb, she is madly in love with that child. She doesn't think of what's going to happen to this child that is a teenager or she's a teenager. What's going to happen when they're married? How are they going to hurt me? Whatever. When Jesus died on the cross, he died unconditionally. He didn't think of what you're going to do one day to him. So it's a love, an unwounded love. An unwounded love. It's an unconditional love. And that's where we need to step back in. How am I going to step back into that? I need to go back to where I was before I was in a mother's womb. Now, if you're in Christ, it means you are yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You've got the ability to go back, to go to your future. You can see where you are in the 100 years. 
It's a reality. You can go back in the word and you can experience and become a witness of every act in the Bible. I've had many encounters. I'm not even shy to share it. Something you can never steal from a person. Remember, a relationship with God means face to face. That's when he reveals it to you. People can say whatever they want to, but once you've encountered Counted and sought yourself with God. Nobody can steal it from you. It doesn't matter what the people say. It becomes a reality. It's engraved in yeah. you. It's enlightened in you. It empowers you because you become a witness. A witness has got power because nobody can steal that. And that's why too many people are into books and teachings. That's why there's so little power in the church. Nothing against books. Nothing against teachings. God uses it. But if that becomes your word, if that becomes your God, you're never going to have relationship. You're going to miss Jesus. You above everything. So I need to have racham to get the true understanding of what love is. That book that Bonnie wrote with Bob and everything, that you learn to love. It means that I go back in the beginning to get the full revelation of what love is. Where somebody comes, it gives you everything. He makes you an instrument of the impossible. He makes you a house of miracles. He makes you a person that can create anything. Plus, he made you king, and he said, you go and create. you learn to love. I'm telling you now. We don't start loving. We're never going to walk in the fullness of God. That's right. And I'm not talking about a false love of let's just be good to everybody. That's, that's what's happening in earth. Oh, bless him. He's so good. Bless her. She's good. Let's just be good. And we help them into hell. Mm -hmm. Because love is truth. Yes. But we don't want to tell people truth because you're going to offend them. If you offend it, get over yourself. <laughs> right. That's the reality. Offense is in yourself. It's a problem. It's God unveiling and revealing something in you that's out of alignment. And the Lord even told me and said, even if they speak a lie about you and you're offended, there's something wrong because the only thing that matters is what do I say about yeah. it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> means I love everything unconditionally. What is everything? All of creation, because God gave you instruction to rule and to reign over all of creation. It means nature, Amen. your houses, buildings, planets, stars, the sun, the moon. And this is not new age. This is your dominion, your place of rulership. So we traveled in December with my wife and I, Etty and I, and we had four, two young couples that wanted to learn more about creation and want to travel with me and Etty. They want to, we must show them and teach them. So they traveled and while I'm on the road, the Lord said to me, do you love this country, Namibia? Do you love Namibia? I said, yes, Lord, I love it. He said, but is it in the essence, in the center of your heart? I said, Lord, what do you mean? He says, love is when you pull it into the center, the essence of your heart, mm. because that's when you care for something. Mm. And from that time, for the rest of the trip, as far as I drove, mm. it's like my heart opened up and like a funnel coming. 
and I saw the earth, the country, just as far as you broke, everything just goes into your heart. You can see transformation coming, you can see change. And I'm not trying to say it tonight, I'm going to share. So, Namibia, more than 50% of the country is desert, there's no rain. The Lord said, You'll go, you people will shift everything. The tectonic plates, you'll shift nature, you'll shift the heavens, you'll shift the moon, the stars, everything. The planets bring it all into alignment, all in God's timing, and rain will come. Transformation of that. Go and look on the internet. Since we've left the country two days, No, two, three days after we left, it started raining until this day, it's never stopped. Wow. The desert is in bloom. Wow. Yes, Lord. The desert is in bloom. Go look on the website. You're welcome to go and look. And I don't say it's just because of the six of us. There were thousands of people that prayed. But I know that I know because of us going into the spirit and shifting things into alignment, bringing the sound, the frequency and the vibrations, right? All the floors and the dimensions of the earth and the heavens and everything that brought rain. Amen. Amen. And we are we the heroes now? No. It's God. Yes. God manifest his word where you are in obedience. Right. Obedience moves God. Yes. Because he said, when you're in my will, I will be present. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you don't love, you can't move. The reality is, we as man in the natural only love what we know and see. Your level of love, your measure of love, will only be according to your knowledge of God. And that's why you die, that you can have a face-to-face -face relationship with him. That every day there's an increase of the perfection of love that's already that's a, because there's always parts of us that's still in hiddenness, still in, in sort of a darkness. So every day as you walk with him, a greater part gets enlightened. What happens? Your body souls becomes more and more in amazement, and there comes a hunger and the thirst of more. The more you reveals, the more you want. The more you can't separate yourself from. So what happens? You step right into 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from when you entered here to now, you have moved in so many dimensions. Don't look in your natural dimension. What is, how have your spirit man changed since you've been in here? So, love is the key to everything. What happens when you got born from above? You got raptured into love. You worry about the rapture. You're waiting for the great day and this big explosion and Jesus appears. What nonsense. When did rapture theology start? In the 1800s. Yeah. Get raptured in love. There's a whole teaching about rapture and that I can do another day. To explain to you everything about what the rapture is about in it. It's not this big bang thing and now suddenly oh, you go. The reality is Colossians 3 verse 4. What does it say then? When I descend from heaven, you descend with me. Have you ever read that? I've been reading that recently. There are people that have been saved for 50 years and have never seen it. 
because we read the Bible to pacify ourselves. We want the safety net not to go to hell. Lord, I've read the Bible today. <laughs> you read the Bible to encounter Jesus. Amen. The Bible is an encounter. It's a life that moves you in dimensions. It gives you the experience to move from love to greater love to Raham. So, when you got positioned as a new creation in Christ, you moved and start to create with them in structures. So, everything that you do, your mind creates structures and systems. So, there are things in your life that you are battling to overcome. Why? How does the devil know how to attack you? Because as you're sitting here right now, you release a sound, a frequency of vibration. It forms structures in the spirit and systems. Because you release sound, frequency, vibration, it forms. You're going to release structures and systems of what is in your heart. So what does the devil do? He reads, he sees your structures and systems that you've created. In natural, it's the same what's in the movies, holograms. He looks at your holograms and he attacks. Do you realize who you are? Your ability and capabilities. Everything in you has got a purpose. Every second of the day, something is busy happening around you and in the spirit. And again, it's to what is aligned to your heart. <coughs> Sorry. So, let's go on. Verse 21. No, verse 20. So, we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor. Now offer it you and be reconciled to him. Christ's ambassador. It is a position. It's not just a title. We quick to declare in prayers, I'm a king, I'm a priest, I'm an ambassador, I'm a son of God. But come on, let's be honest. Can people see it in you when you walk in the streets? Do your fellow Christians acknowledge and recognize it upon us? Or should I say, do you walk with an attitude? Not arrogant, an attitude. Because that's what a true king does. That's what a high priest does. That's what an ambassador does. Ambassador, the Aramaic means seer. T-S-I-Y-R. I don't know if I pronounce it right. There might be people here that knows the pronunciation better than I. One who goes on an errand, a high-ranking person who represents a government and transacts business from the seat of government, a special messenger, and the Greek it says presbyu. I don't know how to pronounce that exactly. It means to act as an established statesman, trusted and respected. Then it also means, in another interpretation, it means one who reveals its origins and is coming of existence. Aha. Uh -huh. So you are a special messenger, you are statesman, transacting business from its country of origin, revealing its country of origin. What is your business you're transacting? 
you're bringing heaven to earth. You're preparing the way. So you you creating the earth as it is in heaven, making a new earth. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I guess all of you are doing it. <laughs> so revealing its origins and origin and coming of existence. Where's your origin coming in? Heaven. Natural ambassador, if ambassador commits a murder in the embassy, they can't arrest him. Am I right? But when the ambassador steps out of the embassy, he's in trouble. So my question is, why are so many Christians in bondage? Why are I having roller coaster rides? Because we have not taken up our positions. We have not ruled. We have not reigned. We have not taken possession of what God has freely given to you. Have you meditated on your positions and on your titles? What does it mean? What is the character and the nature of a king? What's the character and the nature of a priest? What's the character and the nature of an ambassador, of a son of God? What is the authority and the power of those people? What does it look like? How does it look in heaven in God? And how does it look in your own life? What do I need to do to be reconciled to that? Not only the reconciled in words, but by being it. We are too busy becoming something. It's not a season I'm going to become that. It is being that. Mm -hmm. If God said it upon you, declared it upon you, it is done. Your thing is, you need to make a choice. Am I going to align to it or not? Lord, show me what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm that. Yeah. Now I'm going to walk like that. Not, I'm going to get every day, I'm going to improve, I'm going to get closer to it. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, it is getting better. I'm going to get there one day. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> I had a lady the other day that came to me and said it took her now 11 or 13 years 13 years and at last she's free from Freemasonry oh. 13 years Wow! what God are you praying to <laughs> yeah you see we're so busy with the demons we know each and every demon by name but let me ask you what are your angels' names? <laughs> yeah, come on. What are your angels' names? What is the angel of this house's name? What is the angel, the archangel of Charlotte's name? Or Fort Mill's name? Who are the 80 archangels of the four gates of creation? North, south, east, and west. Who are they? Do you know them? But you know the demons. And we ask ourselves, why is God not manifested, revealed through us? We have been chosen to reveal him. listen to this deliverance speakers coming to the churches. What a flippant joke. What a joke. The marriages is in tatters, but they want to tell you to deliver demons. Some of them are busy with fraud and things, but they want to tell you how to deliver demons. They can't deliver themselves. But we run after them in flocks. But we don't know God. 
You don't know the angels. You don't know creation. You don't know what's been given to you. And I'm telling you, it's time that the sons of God rise up. The earth is growing, it's sharpening yes. out yes. to all of creation. So you need to make a choice. Stop playing Christianity. It's a time of being. Not too long. Not too long. It's all good. I can tell you that. God calls you. It's another place. When you reposition. Called you my best friend, John fifteen. Can I ask you tonight to answer yourself honestly? Are you his best friend? That's a feel like. Aramaic means Rahan. What does that mean? To be consumed by God. That's a friend. Best friend. Are you consumed? Best friend, and sorry, woman, ladies, is like men. <laughs> if you put a lot of girls together, a lot of ladies together, you send them somewhere, whoa, man. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it never stops for one second. But you take a lot of men. I'm just joking now, but this is reality. If you take a lot of men, you take them on a candle, they'll sit around that fire and they'll just stare at the fire. <laughs> Every now and then, yes, shake their heads and look, yes, they hang out. They don't talk much, they just hang out, yeah. Sublime. Yeah, they are so content to be with their friends. Mm. My question is. You do the same of Christ. That's a problem in man. We don't hang out with God. Because hanging out is just sitting there and you are all at the amazement. Even if he doesn't say anything or show anything, you're in all the basement. You are your best friend there. Right. Yeah. And that's what God wants to bring back to the earth. All in amazement, glory. Yes. That's why he made you a new creation so that you could become all in amazement. That the jealousy of God will come upon you from other people. bring us to a place where we move into maturity. Hebrew 8, 11, it says that it won't be necessary to teach anymore. We're in that 
that season now that you know me. It's a time and a season where we must get in such a measure of maturity that we don't teach anymore, but we reveal it. We become. We are in that. What's going to happen? Everything in creation is going to get a desire expectation to be reunited, reconciled to the one that created it, the one that gives life. I'm going to end with Number 12 is eight. Moses, my friend Moses. I call him my friend. I love him. <laughs> I've had so many encounters with him. I love him. Numbers, oh, it's at this 3311. My friend Moses, with him I speak face to face. By name, now, by name, which means presence. I speak to him in my presence face to face. So if you're going to read about Moses, who he was, how he went, not like not only up the mountain, the words went in the mountain. What he go? He had a spiritual account, went in Mount Zion in the spirit. He counted God, he became glory. Because he still stepped in there in obedience and humility. He had love because he's been obedient. When you're new creation, raptured in love, raptured in Christ, you get the opportunity to have a face-to-face -face relationship. But now Moses grows as the year goes. He grows into authority. He grows in power. He grows in maturity. Now Jesus speaks to him in Numbers 12 with Abel, Aaron, and Miriam. My son Moses. With him I don't speak in what is it? It's stories. So different translations. Some translations say parables. Some say stories. And others say pictures. Uh, so many translations. He said, to him I speak. Mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. Pay help. Mouth to mouth. What happens now? Mouth to mouth means with him I speak, breath to breath. Your words, your breath are his. I want to ask you tonight, do you realize as you're speaking right now, it's God's breath coming through you? And you're one with him. It means that your words and his words become one. And you become the expression of life of God <clears throat> here on earth. Yes. You become the mouth of God, the wisdom and the understanding being released. It also means mouth to mouth, kiss of God. Yes. So what does Moses do? I'm not only talking to Jesus, seeing him face to face. While I'm with him, he kisses, so impartation, transformation takes place all the time. It means he's touching, he's preparing me, he's resting on purpose, he's imparting me, he makes me a burning one, or he's kindling me. You are a burning son of God. It means when you're a burning one, you are revival. Stop asking the Lord to bring revival. We've got no idea what revival is, and every little outpouring of the Spirit we call revival. Let me make it clear tonight, and I'm not shy to say it of my encounters in heaven. When God's, when revival's going to manifest, no man 
will be able to stop it. Yeah. Right. We look at a church service, which should be a natural thing. Healings, miracles should take place. Prophetic should take every service. And we see one service and now suddenly we call it a revival. Let me tell you. What a joke. Man will never stop revival. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you now, when revival truly comes, people will die because they will not know how to administrate and steward the glory of God. Mm -hmm. You are revival. You are a burning one. Become it. Stop begging the Lord to bring it. I'm a new creation. Born from above, seated in Christ. I have a face to face, mouth to mouth. God is loving onto me each and every second, kissing me, caring for me, taking care of me. expanding me in all dimensions and aspects of creation. I'm blessed to become a blessing. So Lord, I receive all the time and God gives all the time. And what does it mean when he gives? It means Natan. Natan means I give and I never stop giving. That's how God blesses. Amen. So what do you become? Lord, I receive so that I can never stop giving. Amen. Yes. I receive so I fulfill what you commanded man on earth to Adam. Go, fill the earth, multiply, bear fruit. Yes. Son of God. Amen. It's not receiving to see how big I can get and good I birth and how rich. Mm -hmm. Kingdom principle, Lord, I receive so that I can fulfill your instruction to man. Mm -hmm. That is a new creation. Somebody steps back into what it was before it was in a mother's womb mm -hmm. and that manifests God. You and I have got the greatest opportunity right now to be that and to reveal that. Yes. I want to make it clear. It's not what some of the preachers will teach you. It's just for some. It's your choice. Are you a son of God or not? Mm -hmm. God said, I gave everybody the fullness of the God. Yes. Colossians 3. The full of Colossians 2. The fullness of the God it's being one is inside of you. Yes. It is your choice. And what a season now when the earth is filled with darkness and chaos for you to reveal your king. Mm -hmm. Follow that first one. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Any questions? What would you say a primary factor in the apprehension and demonstration of what you're talking about within the overall local body would be, I'm thinking of the maturing, the growing into. Yeah. The, I think one of the biggest problems for us to mature and to grow is obedience. Radical obedience. Because obedience commands a manifestation of God. So the more we're going to see the manifestation of God, the more we're going to grow, the more we're going to pursue. And that's going to manifest miracles. I've seen it as I travel the world. I've seen it overseas. 
wherever in the countries, where there are countries where people are desperate for God. I'm talking about the Muslims, the Buddhists, mm -hmm. all other things. When they see people walking in obedience, they see your God is real, he's alive. Mm -hmm. And even not only they see it, you start realizing the reality of God. Because most people um, are living to one day to go to heaven, to one day to see Christ. He's just a spirit out there. He's not a reality. He's not a living being now face to face because the church have told them as well, you can't see him. Yeah, just read your Bible. <laughs> That's what I would say uh, to me as a key factor, first love and obedience. No compromise. There are three things. Let me, let me do. When I just got saved, I got radically saved. I was, put it mildly, so way off the track evil. <laughs> I was at a high speed on my way to hell. <laughs> above time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, radically saved. The first thing the Lord told me the day that I said, said, first love, radical obedience, no compromise. If you walk in those through, nothing will be held back. And that's what I tried to pursue my whole life. Yeah, you get a lot of persecution because you call the truth. Yeah. That's it. But truth to me is love. And he said, you'll ask me each and every day of your life, increase of love and humility. Yes. Why? Because when God starts doing great things through you, it's so easy to take it for yourself. I take it, for example, if you're in Pakistan, you get over 100,000 people at a night at a crusade. You raise your hands just and you point in a direction and 15, 20,000 get slain at a time. You're not even touching. You stand on the stage. You point to them. You see them slain. You point that side. They get 15, 20,000 slain. It is so easy to stand and say, wow, I'm amazing. You feel like, oh, no, let's get all of them. And you literally, I'm not lying to say, you put your hand in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Because you're in such awe and amazement of God mm -hmm. that you don't become a show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You take it that one night, mm -hmm. wheelchairs. He said, you walk on the stage. You're not going to pray even the first thing you're going to tell these Muslims, because over 100,000, at least 85, 90% of them there are Muslims. They are desperate for a living God. He said, you're going to say now, bring all the wheelchairs to the front, all of you. None of you are going to go in a wheelchair out of the way. Wheelchairs will stay. You'll all walk out. About 70 wheelchairs came to the front. And the Jordan will know that the Pakistanis are radical, the Muslims. Mm -hmm. They don't like Christians. And the Lord said, tell them what I'm going to do now. And I stand and said, none of these people tonight will leave in the wheelchair. All will walk. And he said, now instruct them to walk. I just said, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Yes. Each and every one stood up. Wow. Those people, Pakistanis, stormed that state. We want your God. He's alive. Wow. What was it? Obedience. Yeah. Nothing to do with me. I've just been obedient so that God can manifest. Amen. The other night, sorry, I'm going over time. No, you're good. The other night, also in Pakistan, you said a lady there in the yellow and the and the blue story in the wheelchair. Go down, tell them she's going to walk. And walk, go down stage, go and pull her out of the wheelchair. Small crusade, there are 12,000 people. We go, I go to people, Mike, she's going to stand up and walk now. Go to the same man in the name of Jesus. Stand up and walk, and I pull her up, and I turn around. <laughs> She falls flat on her face in the dust. Elderly lady, she's in her 70s. Now they all look at me. They start murmuring and then, And I said, okay, Lord, now we're all there together. Help her put her back in the wheelchair. I said, Lord, he said, command her to walk. Said, 
the name of Jesus, pull up, leave her. <laughs> in the dust. Now they go crazy. They start pointing at you, shouting things at you. I said, Lord, what have I heard wrong? He said, no, you've heard me right. He said, rebuke us, we destroy that spirit that, that rejects the healing. Mm -hmm. And then tell it to walk. Mm -hmm. Third time I rebuked it, destroyed it, and I break up, said, in the name of Jesus, walks. Oh, flat on her face. Mm -hmm. Third time. Now they go crazy. I said, Lord, what now? What have I done wrong? He said, let it put it in a, uh, in a wheelchair, put it next to the pulpit, and carry on preaching. Take your eyes off her. Okay. Put her in a wheelchair. I started preaching. About 10 minutes later, the crowd started pointing and shouting. And I thought, what have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. But when I looked next to me, there was an elder lady dancing on the stage. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Obedience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of Smith Wigglesworth when he went to the funeral home and mm -hmm. You know, took that guy out of the casket and stood him up on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, yeah. he did that like three times mm -hmm. until he walked. Yeah. That's amazing. You're, you're talking about obedience and you're talking about, I feel like there, there's some that are listening to us either online or in here that, okay, obedience is a first step. But obedience to, you know, sometimes we fight that. Yeah. So, any, any clues for yeah. that? Obedience is the same as faith. But obedience, it's your, your, your biggest thing that will prohibit you from obedience is looking in the natural. Remember, God wants to bring you in awe and amazement. So he's going to push you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. He's going to put you in places where the impossibles are. Mm. What is obedience? What is faith? Not only about the unseen. I remember what the hell the Lord taught me in the beginning. He said, obedience and faith is, uh, faith is being obedient to instruction of God. Right. Faith is not, hey, I'm going to sow $20 into 80, then I'm going to become, hopefully I'm going to become a millionaire. <laughs> faith is always, there's always an instruction of God involved. The same with them being the God instructs, you just go and do it. Don't try and work it out in your head. We overthink it. We complicate it. Can I, I'm going to make a statement, and it's going to sound arrogant, and I'm, I'm not here to, to be arrogant. The reality is to have a spiritual relationship in heaven and earth with God is as easy as breathing. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it in humility. I promise you that. But we overthink. We complicate. Yes. Just be obedient. God does everything. As soon as you go and sit still, I'm going to explain. I must see. I'm going to try my best. And we speak in tongues. And we do it. Instead of just going into rest. As soon as you're going to go. And now I'm going to try this. And I'm going to do this. You in yourself. When you said about the, the woman that, that kept falling over, yeah. this is kind of what I was hearing. You know, sometimes sometimes when the word tells us something, the natural things don't line up. Yeah. And everything is pointing to the opposite direction. Yes. And we're like, no, that must not be God because it looks like this. Yeah. But what you kept doing, you kept saying, No, Lord, but it didn't you tell me that basically? What do I do? Yeah. And he can't. So, so those are things I think are very practical yeah. for everybody right. yeah. when things aren't lining up the way we think it should yeah. work. Yeah. You see, we create an expectation right. according to our natural mind. You see, there's a lot of times where I truly believe we miss God because we're so used to him doing a thing in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So now that's the only vision we've got, the only gateway, the only passageway, the pathway that we are looking at. And meantime, God is next to you, 
This is to talk to you through creation, through trees, through animals, through whatever other people, but you focus and expect him this way and nothing happens. And what do we normally hear? I'm waiting on the Lord. God has spoken a thousand times a long time ago already and you're still waiting. Because you went into yourself. You want to force. You want to manipulate God. And you're busy with witchcraft. You try and be the Tinker Bell. You see? We are so, we need to know God is in everything. Everything's alive. The walls are alive. God has got something. And your, your thing as a son of God means where I walk, I want God revealed out of all of creation. That's love. That's love. You want God to manifest out of all of creation. I've seen it so many times. And that's why don't engage darkness all the time. Because you're busy engaging. God's next to you with a blessing. Tonight you go to your room. You ask him to bless you and to give to this. He's been standing the whole day next to you with your blessing. <laughs> and you rejected it. You deny. You prefer to play with the devil. Any more questions? And I'll pray for you. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, my request tonight is that you will give each and every listener, viewer, person in this room their own revelation of what I've released tonight. That, that comes and it forms and it creates according to their purpose, their calling, their identity and, and your will. That they'll get the understanding, the wisdom and the knowledge. Lord, I declare that the burning fire will come into all of them. Like Jeremiah and Jeremiah 20 that said, I can't stop calling on the name of Jesus or mentioning his name because his fire is in my bones. Lord, I declare that the fire of God, the love of God, will not only be in the bones, but will be in every dimension of each and every cell, body, soul, and spirit. I declare, Father, that they will have a face-to-face mouth-to-mouth -mouth relationship with you, that your word will be confirmed in their lives, that they'll step into radical obedience, that they'll get to know and to understand the Raham, Father, that they'll know, understand Natan, a friend of God, that they'll know the power, the authority, and the positioning of being a king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek, to be a son of God, and how to have the wisdom, the revelation, the discernment, how to rule and to reign. I declare, Father, that each and every one of them will have the ability to administrate and to steward your glory, your purpose, and your plan according to your will, as it is in heaven. Lord, my petition, my request tonight is that each and every one here becomes revival mm -hmm. yes. and fill all of the earth with the fire, the love of God. I bless each and every one, your family represented in different churches here, Father. I bless them with the greatest gift of all. Fullness of your love. Yes. And we give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of your man. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much. There's been a, a, a release, an increase in impartation of, of courage, I think, for many here and online uh, to not hold back. Yeah. The way we've been holding back last week yeah. won't work next week. So thank you. It's great to see you in the heading again and everyone here. We want to receive an offering for, for Jen and
Yeah. And we have envelopes over there. You can uh, make a check to, to them, to, to your name, or to the other one. Daryl saying thank you, and Cindy says, um, stunned into silence, beautiful. <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a big shift. There was a big shift, so thank you. That was a, anybody else have any other comments or questions? Thank you. I do want to ask you, you said you, where were you where you spoke to the earth? In Namibia. Yeah, so, like, how did you, how did your team do that? What did you, and what did you do? You speak to remember the earth has got a sound and frequency and vibration. Everything that God touched or formed to has got a sound to it. When Adam and Eve said sound, frequency, and vibration were destroyed, it came. That is where, if I really had to go intense, that's where it moved from a 432 to a 440. And Google and Hitler in 1914 right. took it to 440. So the reality is when Adam, or not Adam, David, his harp was not a normal harp. It was a 12 string harp, the governmental harp, governmental harp of sound. It, worked, it works at a 432 frequency. But the frequencies were disturbed, the sound, because everything was created and God said, It is glory, it is good, means it's glory, it's gold. So Adam and Eve sinned. Eden was corrupted, different, the earth was different, everything. So what do you do? You command it to come back and to take the frequency, the vibration, the sound and of the original place of creation what God instructed. Everything God created was instructed to take on that sound. Everything that were disturbed, let's say the plates, levels and the soil, every layer of rock or gold or whatever, precious stones, come back into line where there were cracks or they moved and they, you command it to come back. Then you command creation. What is creation? Everything. Listen to it. <laughs> so I got into heaven. And the Lord said to me, Have you commanded the sun, the earth, the moon, and the stars to rule with you today? And I sat there. What? And he looked at me and, he, and obviously he knows your thoughts. He said, So you think it's new age? And I said, Lord, you know what I'm thinking. Go on to it. And I said, yeah. He said, go to Genesis 1. Sun, moon, stars, earth, you will rule over day and night. Yeah. What does rulership mean? Maintaining and upholding as it is in heaven. So then he said, everything that I <laughs> instructed to rule, must rule in favor of you because you're the king appointed by me in favor of light. So what do you do? Now instruct the sun, star, moon, the earth to come in alignment <coughs> so that the sound and frequency is in harmony with the heart of God. Creation, the trees, the soil, the rock. He said, even the rocks will worship me. Everything. You start celebrating God and you create an expectation for rain to fall. I command the waters in the heavens, above the heavens, to open the storehouse reef. I command the waters under the water to come to the front and to be revealed because it's an illness. Now, to give you an example, um, Bonnie, the Bushman in um, Namibia, uh, I have seen the thing where the Bushmen go up a sand dune halfway up they thirsty and they kick it and start talking the next moment water pours out of the sand huh. on a high sand dune there's no rock no nothing spoke speaking to creation they from darkness they wow. serve other gods and that's what you do. So we commanded it. We commanded it to rain. We command the earth to have an expectancy because where there's an expectancy, God comes in. He blesses you according to expectancy. So what do you do? We need to remind creation of what God put in them first. The original intent. And what do you do then? Everything you 
bring back to its original intent, you need to give it a eternal value because everything of God is eternal. So what are you commanded? You will release the sound in frequency vibration for eternity. You command it. You bring it back in its original intent. So they put poison in the lake that I live on. It killed all the grass back. Mm -hmm. And there's animals there that need that food. They live off of that and they cut the swans' feathers. So, it can't. Oh. so I'm, I'm real, you know, real disturbed about it. So, okay, you can either be angry at people or you can start praying that the grass, it would grow back. Yeah. So, so now I did that. And, and I did that. I prayed that. And it took a little while. But the other day, a sw the swan goes down. He comes up with wow. nothing over yeah. and over over. Yeah. But this time, he came. He, I feed him three times a day because they killed all the food. Yeah. That's what I do. So he comes. And he's got this seaweed this long hanging from his beak. Yeah. And I'm, like, ready to, to take it off. I mean, this thing's mean, usually. But I'm, like, come here. Let me get that off you. Yeah. And I realized that was the answer to my prayer. Yeah. 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 So what do you do? It. You remove. So now if people want to poison that anybody's going to throw the poison, it will have no power, no authority. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. you need to do that. Will you pray because, with me? I mean, I care about this. Yeah. <laughs> so you do it. You just go and instruct it. Lord, I declare. I declare. That all I instruct the angels who are going to destroy all the poisons and fluids, whatever people come to destroy your creation, will have no power on the thought that will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I trade it for always a trade. I trade it for life. I trade it for multiplication of your goodness, your glory. I trade it for a testimony where in God will be glorified. Amen. Done. That's original intent. Yeah. He's like St. Francis of the Lake. <laughs> you know, he know, he knows. I see her. He knows. Yeah. I'm like, I love that. It's weird. It's weird, but it's what I am. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really names, weird. Like I'm, that white duck. Oh, I mean, no, I mean they, yeah. another person named the ducks, but it, nobody better mess with my ducks or swans That's or good. anything. It's like, don't. No, you say, don't. Don't. Now, don't. now you must start listening to the messages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they talk. Creation talks. Yeah. Well, they, they I tell our dog, Fur, you better watch, be nice to those ducks because Mary's watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yell at the people do not feed the ducks bread. Bread is bad for ducks, yeah. it makes them sick. Here's some, but God's showing me instead of that, now I hand them people buy 50 pound bags of duck and swan food and yeah. deliver it to my door. So I fill them with bags and I give them to yeah. them. Instead of yelling at them, I say, Here, do this. They're like, I didn't know, and they're thinking, you know, it's just the weirdest thing. <laughs> Sometimes I see the swan, and he's waiting. Yeah, wait, they wait for me. And they say, yeah. Mary will be here soon. Hang on. I have a swan ministry. This has been so awesome. Yes, it has been. Excellent.